I will call the meeting to order. Um, as with all of our committee meetings now, <clears throat> it's being recorded, so uh, and make sure your mics are on when you speak. You can keep them on all the time or them on off either way. Just make sure they're they're uh, they're on when you're talking. Um, <clears throat> thanks for coming to the special meeting we're having. Thank you to the members in the back that, that showed up today. Uh, this is obviously to review the uh, recommendation from, from the committee to the board on uh, Brittany. Um, as we all know, the rumor mill and the assumptions that are out there think that it's already done deal. Uh, we're here to say one more time that it is not, and that's why we're here today to make a recommendation to the board. <clears throat> so in your packets, there are uh, a number of, the, <clears throat> with the number of emails that came in, instead of having, uh, killing a bunch of trees, we decided to just summarize those, and you will see that the uh, uh, high, high percentage of members that uh, voiced some input want to keep Brittany open. So it was uh, less than, uh, a little less than 2%, by the time you put all the ones, the PO, the emails that came into to the uh, Bell Vista P, uh, POA email address, the ones I've got personally, plus all the petitions, uh, we had probably 350 people sign multiple petitions uh, to keep it open. So, in an overview, that's kind of the status from the input that we've had uh, from the from the community, which we deeply appreciate. So, what we'll do is we'll just go through. Um, if each <coughs> committee member wants to give kind of just a quick synopsis, synopsis of, of what their position is going to be, and then uh, we'll take a vote, and then we'll move on to um, the repurposing part or the how to get rounds up part, depending on how the committee votes to then recommend to the board. Mark is not here today. He's on vacation down in Florida where it's 98 degrees. Uh, so he sent an email, it's also in your packet, <clears throat> but I'll go ahead and read uh, his email that he sent. Um, before you go yes, on. go ahead. So I did not assume that in this meeting there would be a vote of the committee to put forward a recommendation or not. That really needs to be done in our regular committee meeting next week. I, I believe yeah. you, you could do it at either um, because you have a quorum here, you could technically do it at either. I think originally the contemplation was was not to take a vote today, and you could take a vote, but to take a vote at a regular meeting. But you could do either simply because you have a majority, you have a quorum of the golf committee. Whatever you'd like to do, in other words. We could put the draft together and officially vote on it the next meeting. That would be fine. <clears throat> Thank you, Susan. Uh, Mark's email. After reviewing all the input, and I don't have my readers on, so uh, after reviewing all the input from the community, it is my recommendation to keep Brittany open. I would like to add that we look at an eight-month period to compare rounds of revenue the last two years. If the rounds of revenues do not meet or exceed previous years, then we need to explore closing Brittany. We can try different ideas to increase the rounds, but the cost to maintain our golf courses and amenities <clears throat> continue to increase with inflation. This is a consequence of not raising assessments and revenue uh, to keep pace with inflation. Bella Vista is a unique community that offers incredible golf courses and amenities at one of the lowest prices in the country. If we <clears throat> don't, as a committee, choose to increase our dues or assessments, we will continue to have, uh, have to make hard sacrifices that's taking away the main reasons we chose Bella Vista to live in. We all love Bella Vista and want to keep this place beautiful that we oh, keep it sorry, keep it beautiful, the place we call home. So that was that was mine. So on the same lines, uh, Mary, would you like to start? I am in favor of keeping it open uh, for several reasons. First, it, it would eliminate the it's a, a nine hole course that we can keep and it doesn't flood. Um, the possibility of, especially after this weather we've had this year, the possibility of losing Birch, Birchdale just adds um, more credence to keeping it open. Plus, I think it's a family-friendly course. Good, thank you. Uh, <clears throat> I want to say I was really 
impressed with the turnout at the meeting and the passion people had for golf. And I think if we don't vote to keep it open, we've lost a lot of integrity. We tell people that no city has been made. I was really impressed with the way people came out. I think we need to go forward. Uh, we need to drop some forward tees so it's a little easier, of course. But it's not an easy course. Uh, par uh, fours are 400 yards and nearly at par threes are 133 yards, number nine is. I don't know how many people can reach that. We need to get rid of the men and women designation on the team. Uh, white and red, whatever, don't call them twins and women's. Uh, I think marketing, I don't have a lot of ideas, but I've seen quite a few good ideas. How to market it, uh, I had some good, some good ideas about prices. You know, I think that maybe a yearly membership on this certainly might not be a bad idea. I don't know what that is. Somebody's meeting, I think, suggested $500. I'm not sure that's not a little speed. But you know, if that's the only person they're going to buy. If, if that gets more use out there. Uh, well, the research I did on guided courses and things like that, I, I found the putt putt courses are the ones that are actually going up, and those are sh shorter courses yet. Those are courses that are 100 yards or 80 yards long, as long as they have. They're all part three. So I don't know whether you can combine something like that. Um, I think we go out there and look at the tee boxes, and what we can easily establish, some of you won't be able to, but many of you will be able to establish a more reasonable tee box uh, so people can have more fun. It's a wonderful place to take your grandkids. I think it's worth, worth investing and developing a strategy to increase play and to market and to go forward. There's nothing held over their heads about it. If you don't increase, you know, just go forward with a positive attitude. That's my two cents. Thanks, Steve. Good. Steve. Uh, I too was amazed and impressed with all the uh, member turnout and the input, uh, collecting all those uh, surveys or, or uh, signatures to put on the petitions. Uh, just fabulous. Um, people I talked to basically from the very beginning of the conversation were to keep it open. Um, and the questions, you know, what's the goal? Was it about the money? Uh, $46,000 out of a $2.2 million golf subsidy is like um, just hitting uh, out of bounds, a, a triple bogey. Um, was the goal about land use? Um, and it seems to also uh, raise the question because, you know, there's at least 200 uh, members out there who bought specifically for golf front property. Um, the course is huge. And uh, if, when Burksdale floods, and if the plan continues to be to close the other nine holes, um, I would assume that there's going to be a lot more usage out there at Burksdale. Um, so, or out at Britain. Um, so, based on all those reasons, I'm proud to be with the members to keep Britain open. And uh, I hope the issue is solved and uh, really see no reason to bring it up in the future, uh, pending those other events. On the marketing side, um, I've also heard great ideas, don't really have the time to reiterate them or speak specifically to any of them, uh, but what I would suggest to our marketing department is to create lists between the members and non-members when they do these email blasts. Um, for example, uh, you know, the message to each group is qualitatively different. So, for example, with Brittany, a person with a member with a photo ID can play for $13, but if the message is going out, it costs 20 well, that's a substantial difference. Um, and then lastly, on a personal note, I wanted to uh, thank the Golf Committee for all of its insights, support, due diligence, and determination for trying to keep our courses we're on the same team, and I'm glad you've been a part of this. And uh, as you know, I was elected to the Board of Directors, and so I'm stepping off the committee at May's end. And I wish you all the best of success, and look forward to hearing more from y'all. Thanks, Steve. Mr. Phil? I also agree that um, the response from the community was, <coughs> to say, overwhelming. 
think the consensus of opinions were well received. I appreciate the work that Jason, somebody he probably Tammy has done to uh, do all the typing and to put this stuff together. This is a great course for those who want to practice on the course uh, techniques and short game and or sometimes long game depending on which hole you're on. The other thing is it's a great place for the children to learn uh, how to play looking for a and move out there and do some work. The other thing that I really really feel strongly about is should it be closed? We only have one nine hole course that may not exist a few years from now if we have floods. So why make a decision to close something that will never fly? Keep it open. I think we would get tremendous support from the residents. Keep it open and move forward. There are lots of marketing ideas, such as tournaments, kids' tournaments, all in family type tournaments that we can put out there and increase rounds and revenue and usage of a very good local course. Thank you. Thanks, Doug. Susie? Um, I also agree we should keep it open, or file anyway, um, really because of the community support. Okay. Um, I know I, if my thoughts, though, are not without reservation. Okay. When I look at this from several perspectives, there are some things that I think need to be said, and we often don't say these things. Okay, uh, the first thing is it's easy to say that forty-eight thousand dollars is pocket change or a small percentage. The reality is, though, it's a lot easier to spend money than it is to save it. And um, right now, we're looking to save money uh, because of the fire. If, if this were any other year, it, this probably wouldn't even gotten notice. Okay. Um, so the money is important. The other thing is, from the financial um, analysis that was done, um, there's, a, there's a fair number, even though it's a small analysis, there are some assumptions there that may or may not be realized. You know, one is that 80% of the revenue will transfer. Okay? So when I listened to the folks that were talking, you know, the ones that play the most are the groups out there. And there are about three groups that play. And at least the two groups that represent the women's groups indicated they probably would not transfer to Worksdale. Because playing Brittany doesn't compare to playing another 18 hole course. Playing, playing Brittany compares to having coffee, going for a walk, and other non golf activities for most people. Okay. It's quick, it's easy, it's fun, and it's close. And you don't have to wait. So it, does fill a niche market that we don't fill with our other courses. So, um, so that transfer may not happen and that changes the dynamics. But what we also didn't consider was what happens if we see another 20% decrease or 30% decrease this year and next year. And what that does from a cost perspective, all of a sudden our relative costs are much higher. Okay. And, I mean, it's a stark reminder that our golf business is decreasing. Okay. We're losing golfers, and we're losing golfers at a higher rate than we're losing rounds in revenue. So, uh, it's a little concerning. Um, however, however, uh, I mean, there were so many people that were positive about it, and I'm, my hope is that that enthusiasm translates into play. And it needs to translate into play for members who do not currently have an annual pass. Okay? It doesn't do us any real good for people with an annual pass to play their 111th round at Brittany. Okay? So our target market really is the neighborhood there, because people play it because it's close. Nobody drives from the Highlands out to play Brittany. Um, it, it's close, it's inexpensive, it's fun, it helps, it can hone your skills, even though some of us think it's not much fun because our skills are not very good. Um, 
it, it, is, it has a, a niche in our, our market. And I think that it's a way that we can engage in some low cost, local marketing. Because I don't believe the market for this course is in Benico. Because they have nine whole courses in Benico. Okay? But it, it's really for us focused primarily on Central and East Side. If we care to split it that far, usually we would not. Um, and uh, first of all, I'll remind people that it's there, because we forget sometimes that our population changes every seven years. You know, we're so used to playing with the same people all the time that we forget that there are a lot of people that move in and out, and they may not know that it's there. So uh, primarily um, email kinds of things. And um, just see if we can reverse the trend. Okay. I agree with Mark. Uh, in this conference that I believe that come November we should really take a hard look at the results. Okay? Because what I would not want to do is go through the winter, take care of the greens, you know, maybe the course the whole winter when nobody plays it, right? To come around at the beginning of next season and say let's close it. Right? When there's the same information available in November. And I'm not in faith, I mean, but I think at some point we're going to have to look at the hard truths of things. I hope that doesn't come for a long time. Uh, I also don't think that the flooding, the Birksdale to Brittany transition, is particularly meaningful either. I think that if Birksdale closes, and then they will transfer to Kingswood or Country Club before they will go, or Dogwood before they will transfer to Brittany. Okay. So that's my piece. Susan. I am also of the opinion to keep it open and, and I will back uh, most other committee members' comments on the involvement from the community and the vocal <coughs> and the enthusiasm and the emotion. Um, there's been some great ideas, um, <coughs> some fabulous input, uh, but some, there's some ideas on some things we can do. Some have been mentioned around this table. Uh, Dean said you know, some pips, or I like to call them Mary's Tees. Uh, the plan forward tees. <laughs> I say I don't say because she plays, but I say because she's 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 very excited about it. Uh, so uh, look at it, you know the longer holes there, and uh, you know look at maybe some more family type activities out there. Um, so, so you know my my sway is to keep it open as well. So uh, thanks everybody for for your uh, your individual thoughts. So on that, um, let's let's look at since we're gonna we're, we're gonna table a vote to the actual golf committee. Um, but now that we have a, a consensus of keep it open, uh, let's look at how to increase rounds and maybe come up with five um, that we can put in the recommendation uh, to the board. Yes, Mayor. I would love to see us offer a family pack. If we're trying to get our grandkids and our sons and daughters of the younger uh, members who we have living here in Bella Vista, it needs to reflect that. And an annual pass would be fine for an individual, but family pass would be much more effective for this course. Uh, that's a good one. That one was brought up quite a bit at the input meeting, too. Yeah, okay. Yeah, perfect. Darrell, what's the situation on the junior golf? It seems like years ago when I ran it, I played with them in Kansas City or something, and sometimes you would call a course, and if they were junior, they could play free, basically. So of course, if they were coming with an adult. Um, I kind of spearheaded the junior program behind the board and Ruth and everybody that was on the board back in the day, and uh, we have not raised the fees in the last seven years, that is nine dollars screen fees uh, for junior to play 18 holes. Uh, if they ride, they got to pay for card fees just like everywhere else is what it goes. So we've kept that and everything else has gone up. So 
Um, just to let you know, our junior program is growing. Our camps are being full every year, and our junior league program is growing. We do have the um, Kids First program. Not many people are aware of it. It is on the website. The board approved this. If you have an annual membership and you want to buy the First Kids program, it's $100 for the year, and anybody that comes in under the age of 18 pays for free as long as you're there. And it's a heck of a deal. If you have a photo ID, it's just 200 for the year. It's not per child. So we have buy-ins from grand grandparents that, have, that know they have the kids for a week. So they will buy their card for 100 bucks, their annual golfers, the kids come down, they come out for that week and they play. And that's a heck of a deal. So after 12 o'clock, it's not during prime time. And the reason why is just because we have so many golf groups and we make sure our members are the top first. For the long same lines as Barry made me come up with a plan where he only has a annual, but they have grandkids come in town, so we we work up something where they can come out and play at a reasonable price. Because it's a wonderful place to take grandkids, and the main reason is because you don't plug up an 18 year old. So if you take grandkids, take an eight year old out that hasn't played much golf, you're trying to introduce them to the game, and you're going to the country club, you know, you, you spend all day letting people go through. So, so, I mean, on this, on the last couple of years, um, Jason's been part of the Gravit. He's assistant coach at the Gravit High School. And my son plays on it. And we actually had our tryouts at Brittany for the same reason. It doesn't slow everybody down. So we've utilized that golf course out there. And rank days. And, yeah. and it's, it's been a pretty rank days and stuff like that. So the juniors know it. Uh, first tee has moved, so just so everyone's aware. First tee is in law. They have a big facility donated by them, lots of money invested by Tyson's Foods. They won't come back. Um, I have visited with First Tee over the last six months. Even the facility down here at Tanya Creek, that top portion, we are taking over for our junior programs. Um, they have got no interest coming back down here because our programs have started to grow. So they had they were the main ones that did it in the past <coughs> and everything. That's kind of dissipated, and now they're down and low, and we're doing our own camps with all the pros we have on board now. So we're working on our own programs. Does that help? So first tee has moved. Okay, sure. Okay. Can I ask that question? Yeah. Okay, so family pass. Well, and uh, kind of following up on um, uh, Dean's comments, a lot of uh, we got quite a few of the grandkid comments mm -hmm. that. Um, Maybe as far as a package goes of some sort, um, even a limited time package, you know, for two weeks or whatever. So a lot of times the kids just come for a couple of weeks, and you know you want to take them out three or four times, maybe, right? But not the whole year, right? And the, I don't know if the price would be that much different, but again, maybe it's not a whole year thing, but maybe for a block of of time. Well, maybe individual punch cards or like they on the TV ad, only just would be just for Brittany and you know, a parent or a grandparent and a child go out and two punches. Be just good for Brittany. Good. Jason, could we have some sort of uh I can all in the family tournament. Play dare uh, just for nine hoes instead of tying up an 18 hole course. Um, going the dark thing in Thailand was a success. It was nine hoes. We have that out there as well. What's the ter the terrain? Because yes. I mean, we, <coughs> we put the, we put the glow in the dark on the back nine of Highlands for because I understand that. And, and actually, that came up at the community meeting, and I wrote it down. I hadn't played Brittany since the high school kids. I went out and had a look, and it would be unsa unsafe. Uh, well, yes, for the glow in the dark. It's really not so much. Well, first of all, the golf balls. Uh, you see where they go, so you know it's on the house and stuff like we had at Highlands. But it's the actual driving of the golf cars crossing the roads. That that was our main deal. So we we picked Highlands back then. There's no road crossings. Everything's kind of quiet out there. That's why we did it. And we had more success. And I had several blowing the balls in my yard. <laughs> the next morning, people were picking them up and looking at them like, "What are these things? They don't look like golf balls." <laughs> Wasn't my affiliate input. 
Uh, <coughs> so a family tournament. So I, I wonder on that family part of it, I'm kind of bringing the grandkid thing into it. I wonder how many or not only a family, obviously that includes grandparents, grandkids, fathers, mothers, and all that. But I wonder if you did a grandparent, grandkid type of thing as well. Not even be more specific on that. Well, I think you could do with residents and kids in Dovis have a family sure. yeah. type thing, not just grandkids, right. because you know, they might be here only for a few days and they don't play golf yet. But if you get the people who live here to have a family tournament out there uh, on a regular basis, maybe, maybe once every two months or something like that would help. Susan, does the Friends of Dogwood, is that, are they also the Friends of Brittany? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, I didn't know how, how far out you Well, I, I was thinking, uh, we're, we're getting ready to start planning for our tournament, which is Labor Day. <coughs> we're talking about. Uh, but I was thinking, you know, we might be able to just add a nine-hole um, tournament in Brittany the same day. Um, Sidebar, might you make it a 27-hole fun event, something unique. The committee on that. Okay. Yeah. But do something to engage, to bring Brittany into the picture on that. Can it be used as a shotgun? Just a nine hole shotgun? Maybe a, or a men's scramble, women's scramble? Oh, sure. Yeah. Yeah. Those are just parts of the tournament ideas. Do our twilight fee supply up there? Might be a good idea. Well, I you might have some people that work. Four letter word, I realize, but uh, that might want to come out and get. But that's one thing good, unique about that golf course. It doesn't take four hours to play it. If you out there, you're really serious about it, and you're by yourself in your car, you can get around there easily in less than an hour, unless you run into those people, which is one of the problems we're having. You don't run into anybody. But, I mean, it's it's a course that plays faster. <clears throat> Yeah. It might be something you could, you could market some twilight fees out there. It might get some a little more traffic late in the afternoon. I don't know about August or September. Right. One of the things that <clears throat> I had that came up a few times in some conversations and emails I had was the you couldn't have 18 whole groups do it because you, there's just no way to do that. But the other nine whole groups that don't play out there. Um, Asking them, begging them to add that to their rotation would be helpful. I'm, I don't know if you, I'm sure you've already had the conversation. We have. What was the response? We did. <laughs> Got it. It's not particularly positive. Um, and, and I belong to two nine home groups, and, I, and they, um, in general, they don't feel like they get enough golf out of playing there. That if they're only playing nine holes, you know, a week or for this, then they don't get enough golf. It doesn't feel like it's long enough. Uh, and then it's was one of my groups. <coughs> but some of the things that Dean suggested about changing the tee boxes, where you, you know, kind of tee off from over the pitch, um, potentially could make a difference on some of that. And, and kind of. I know it's a little out of scope, but um, I was looking at several of them. I mean, I'm, for the nine hole women's, we play Birkstone quite a bit. For another nine hole group, we have Birkstone on our rotation one time. And uh, you kind of wonder how that come about. Why wasn't it more? Two of our courses don't lend themselves very well to nine hole courses. I don't in Cable. You know, so, <clears throat> I know they play out there some, they sort of come to lay out there and go right back against the, the, well, the golfers, you know, because they, they play their nine holes the whole time. Yeah. Well, we play at Kingswood quite a bit, and um, we basically tee off on one and ten, okay. is, is how it works. And it works out very well, yes. and it uh, keeps us there for just a couple of hours and not four hours.
about from a marketing, <clears throat> pure marketing perspective, um, some sort of name game campaign type of thing. Uh, off the top of my head, um, the cutest little course in the list or something. <laughs> I don't know what to, what to uh, do. I know, we, we do something get, like that. We do get one letter. Um, it's it's kind of yeah. You can put whatever you like. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but we do get one letter from a member that oh, has a little job. Quite a bit, quite a few suggestions. Actually, she had quite a quite yes. a good list of marketing suggestions. Um, and I think that in general, we need to uh, trust our professional marketing team to decide what they need to do on that. Yeah, I won't take credit for that. That was from uh, uh, Miss Evergreen. I don't remember all the names yeah. she had. Yeah, she, she had, had quite a few. I was impressed with her list. That's that's better. But curious. Don't know she <laughs> So we'll get with Kim on putting something like that. We can go in the email blasts and things of that nature. But highlight a little bit more. And when we talk about the email blast, we need to make sure we advertise it <coughs> in the golfing email, but more importantly, in the general mm -hmm. one. Because people who are in this target may, in fact, not be on the golf list yet, because they may not play regularly. So they don't get the golfing. And I would reiterate that we want to make sure to put the different prices in that email blast. For example, there's one, you know, thirty-seven dollars for extra non-members. It's thirty-one for us. That's another reason to keep it open. Then we'll. We got courses that someone can play for less than forty one dollars. Yeah. If they're a member. And I think that's that's important. We had alternatives for people that play. On that note, is there do you feel like we should recommend any pricing structure changes? <coughs> Up down, keep the same. Other than the family passes, I think that's good. Yeah, the family but. passes need to be. My idea of family for the family pass was to hit the people that aren't normally playing golf, and that's so they can bring uh, the the um, mom and dad, and two sons or whatever, a daughter or whatever. <clears throat> so you make it family friendly, especially on the weekends when they're, they're not working or after five at night when they're not. And they can bring the family out and enjoy two hours. It's a nice walk. It would be fun for them. So the, the, the pricing needs to be geared for those people. Get more of them involved, they're going to play golf a lot longer. So. What is the status of um, junior clubs out there? there? Are there any available for rent or for free? Or could that be a campaign we can do to get Sets of we don't have any. We've actually got ones donated um, from various of our membership um, to our junior <coughs> program, and our programs have moved to Highlands right. because of the range out there and everything. Right. That's where we rotated. So I'll get with Alex, and we can probably put a couple sets together. Um, not full sets, but a driver, <coughs> and that we tell you what we're Well, I, and I know they're, they're obviously not the best clubs, but at the beginning, golfer doesn't really care. But I know. The high school. I mean, there's a cage full of clubs that have been donated that we never use, so we can maybe get over and get a couple sets. What about possibly our um, dogwood tournament? Part of the proceeds from that could go to buy some from some equipment for kids. And also, kind of following up on what Mary said for family <coughs> pass, I think we don't, when we think family, we don't necessarily need to think parents and children. Because more and more, what I'm seeing, I've, I've you know several women here who have followed their adult children to, that, to this area. And so it may be a way to, again, with a, a family pass of some sort, 
you know, get them and, and the kids that they came with and their kids. Right. So when we think family, I wouldn't be thinking what we would consider a nuclear family. Right. right. <clears throat> you know, as I think about that course, I'm not for sure we couldn't have make just a par three turn it out there. You know, the par fours, the four par fours I think there are out there, you could probably establish a par three T on all four of those, and then you could have a a par three tournament, and people wouldn't have to carry a whole set of golf clubs out there, and maybe a lot of people don't want to play those four. They're pretty challenging holes, particularly seven and, and eight are very challenging holes, and very, very challenging holes, I should say. But anyway, I think, you know, maybe you could establish a par three tournament. Wouldn't have to play it all the time, but if you want to have a par three tournament, some you need to turn in the evening, maybe for yeah. one of our evening tournaments. You know, you could have a R three tournament, and then meet back at the clubhouse with lots and boogers or something. You know, something like that might be a good idea, do something like that, and just have the R three. And then you don't have to worry about the R fours is where people are losing the balls and slowing down the play. So that might be an idea. Turn it into the pasture golf that I used to have in my house. Wedges and wedges on, or wedges and putters. <laughs> Are there any other changes to the course? I mean, we're talking marketing, but are there any other changes to the course um, that we should think about? The only other one, sorry, Dean, the only other one that came up a couple times, and, and Keith, I definitely want you to address this, because we, we had this in the regular committee meeting, was larger holes. And we know that that, although it sounds like a great idea, from a maintenance and a perspective, not necessarily the best the, the best solution. The problem with those eight inch cuts is we would we could move them like once a week, maybe. They're very hard to move and get level. And those greens are so small, I think we would have to keep them in the same place for a long period of time. Now that being said, in the summer months that might not be an issue. Winter months when that grass goes dormant. That might be a bigger issue. So maybe if we do something like that, we would we would try it in June, July, August time frame first, because they're very difficult to move. If you've ever come out and try to change a regular cup and then try one of those, it's uh, it's difficult to get it dug out, and it's difficult to get it back to level. My way in on, on that, and I've actually just gone back from. Kind of a big meeting with about 51 PGA members and employees, and we were visiting about the big holes. And is it successful? 99% of them said no. Uh, one, from a maintenance standpoint, and two, from the whole you miss, you miss a big hole as well. And one of the pros turned around and said, Well, why haven't they made big holes and putt putt courses? You know, that kept them all the same. That's a good point. So they have found that it hasn't been working. They've tried it. They've tried events, um, and they've just moved. No matter one hole on a par five to get people an eagle opportunity, something like that that's unique. But you leave it up all the time, it hasn't brought any extra rounds in or anything. They're most of their golf courses. I'm talking from California to Florida. <coughs> Did you have something? Okay. Um, one other thing that I think was mentioned several times, and I think probably one, what Dean said is doing a uh, you know golf and you know golf and social uh, <coughs> event because now that we have uh, food there and, and uh, beer and wine, that's a Reasonable possibility, but before it really wasn't. With doing some of those, I, I know um, it's the friends of Dogwood, right? That's mm -hmm. okay. Uh, I know ours is friends of Dogwood. Um, would that be something the friends of Dogwood would do? Or would, 
would it be worth getting a couple people around that course to form a Friends of Brittany? I, I don't, well, I think that for Friends of Dogwood, it's probably not realistic based on the size of, I'm hoping with so much enthusiasm, maybe we can get some more people active. Right. Okay. But I think if it was kept fairly straightforward and didn't have a lot of competition and scoring in it, that the golf shop itself could handle, um, you know, something like that. Would it be worth approaching some people and to be starting friends of Brittany? If you, if you have people who want to be friends of Brittany, or we'll call it whatever. we would really love to have them as the whole group because it's very difficult to get active people in these groups. Just brainstorming, I don't know if it has anything to do with this or not, but there's a lot of pitch and putt activities I see going on, you know, with all the time the juniors and also with other people too. I don't know if you can work up a pitch and putt activity out there. You know, so if you're holding a contest on like number one, the closest to the pitch, that thing, or you do a pitching contest, or maybe you could have several different skills contests as you go around the course. Maybe you'd be close to the pin on number one and pitch on number hole and something else like that. That's just a just reaching them. Yeah, why not a dry putt and chip contest for kids? They do it at um, the Masters, you know? They, they have their own little uh, pick a Saturday or something. Yeah, um, Pinnacle hosted, in fact, they've just it's gone to first tee. Uh, host, had hosted it this year, but the past five years has been at Pinnacle to time to the LPGA. That's when they're hosted it, but we could we could mimic we could mimic that just, and encourage the juniors to come out and try, and then they can go to the sectional, which would be at one of the best. Good idea. Yeah. You might design something called target golf, which is uh, different flags and different distances, and have a contest to see who can get. Uh, Best shot on those targets. Just take a couple of hoes and uh, maybe on the par fours. Have something in the short and something will be long. Just an alternative to chip and putt. Yeah, definitely. The um, what, what I can, if you'd like, what I'll do, I can do is take this and kind of categorize it and club it together. And I think that we'll get a, a shorter uh, working list yep. for the next week. Yep. I'll lay Because they fall into about, about three or four categories. Right. Um, one other comment is on some of the marketing, especially the basic, just branding kind of thing. Uh, I think it's important that we get started soon because summer is here. And uh, especially there will maybe some extra enthusiasm as soon as uh, Brittany and Dog would reopen. That we might have an opportunity uh, to get attention uh, and it's fresh in people's minds. I'd like to see us, like Mark said too, again in November, somehow measure this. If we're going to start these programs, we need to track. We have to have some kind of tracking to see how much we've increased, how many people are coming back, how many maybe non non golfing families come out or whatever. So that we have somewhere to track a lot of this. As long as we factor in uh, the impact of the fire and having to close Brittany for an extended period, we just need to make sure that we factor that in. Take them off my own. Yeah. <clears throat> Good. <clears throat> so do we want to prepare the draft now or do we want to do it the next meeting or do it now and then next meeting vote on it or how do we want to, uh, I, mean, I have down to prepare the draft now. Well, I, uh, we can. I, I think that in general, since everybody, I think is we have a consensus to keep it open, yeah. right? So there's no uh, a lot of 
argument there. Uh, the one question would be, you know, is there a, would we suggest that there be a review in the fall or not? You know, some people said yes, some people said no. Um, I'd say it's way too early. Yes, I, I agree. Early. I think it's too early. Yeah. It's going to take us a while to get any of these things implemented. So. I just want to add to that goal's a big plan. But to get it going, you've got to implement it early, log it, go along, you can't make spot changes on the fly. So, as on a golf operation standpoint, you have suggestions as you look at it, there's working into the budget, there's working staffing, because I've got to look at that as well. Make plans, prep it out, and then look through, and through as that plane starts to take off and see how we're doing. If we're not getting high enough, then you make the little changes. But right now, I'm asking, just give me some time, get my staff together, hold out there, his dynamic, give him some ideas, see what he can do on that aspect, and we'll go from there. That we just draft a normal, just a regular proposal that we are recommending that. Britain stay open at this point in time. Yeah, I mean, I'll, we'll, <clears throat> I'll draft it, Senator, everybody be, you know, when, if you can send, okay. compile those, get those to me, and then I'll we'll do it, and it's, and it's going to be a short three-liner, you know. Um, and then we'll put that on there so everybody has, they can read through it, um, and on their own time until next meeting, and then our, our regularly scheduled meeting, well, our regularly rescheduled meeting. <laughs> Uh, next Wednesday, uh, then we can go through it in detail if any changes and book. And on the, on the list, I don't know that we need to necessarily trim it down too much, kind of along the same line to give Daryl Categories and, and, yeah. Yeah, his staff right. some time to think what's feasible, what's not feasible, yep. what marketing works and doesn't work and that kind of thing. So. Yep. Jason, can yes, we ask for any comments from him? Yes, does anybody, uh, yeah, we sure can, but we got, we got some time, sure. Does anybody uh, have any comments? Um, Go ahead. Uh, oh, 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 hang on. Let's do that microphone. Sorry, Jim. I am not a golf, okay? I, I have been told not to golf. Uh, after breaking the window of my Canadian officer, I was ordered not to go. So I don't go. But what I do see, uh, I fish. And the problem I've seen is, like, you go to state parks now, they don't, and you want to rent a boat, it doesn't cost cheap, it's not cheap anymore. They've gone to high end boats where it costs like $60 an hour. So you alienate and disenfranchise the people who can't afford other things. Don't get in the idea of pricing out other people when you, when you think about how, how to effectively cover your costs. Mm -hmm. Because you're going to end up, you'll end up increasing your fees up here, which is only a small port, amount of people that can afford it, while disenfranchising the rest of the group down here. Um, I think um, once, and, I, and I've seen this, I, I spent 20 years in the service, going around to bases where they keep closing things, closing things, and they don't reopen again. They're gone. And there's nothing there left for the people to do. And you lose them. So once you close something, it's gone. It won't come back again. So really consider that when you make decisions on it. You know. yep. Thank you. Thank you for your service. <coughs> <coughs> Testing. Yeah, it's on. It's on. Thank you. Um, I'm just sitting there not planning on talking, but number 15, I just wanted to expand a little bit. My husband and I know golf, but I loved that idea of a wine and dine, or wine and dine. If it could be like a date night. My husband and I don't own anything for golfing. We have no idea what we're doing. There could be like a 10 minute session to teach us what the clubs even are and spend some time together. We would absolutely love that. And I know so many people on my street that we bring them to love that too. Thank you. I just want to thank the committee. You're doing a good job. You listen to the community. 
I don't want to ever be a part of for that. Thank you. I live on the golf course. We enjoy it very much. Um, so thank you for your efforts. I do really appreciate it. You're welcome. So would you want to be uh, the chairman of the Brittany and Friends? Yes. <laughs> 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 I was just asking. Even after he gave us a compliment, look at me. Never stop selling. No, no, right? Never stop selling. Jason, if you get the wine and dine group, they might be friends. Wine and nine. Wine and nine. And at the bottom of your wine glass is a sticker and if it says one, two, or three, depends on what you like. There you go, wine, nine, and nine. I got a question. Do you yes. have any contracts with any of the high schools about coming out and playing golf for their their uh, golf tournaments or their their? Uh, yeah, uh, I can answer. That. We do we do have con uh, contracts. In fact, Highlands is the home of um, Gravit, Lifeway, and Benville West. Um, Benville plays out of Bella Vista Country Club in Kingswood. Uh, Brittany's not long enough. It's not graded long enough to have a full event on it um, for the kids and not ranked enough. So we just used it for ranking days because it was quiet out there. Um, but we do have contracts and we, we, we support the junior high schools in the afternoons. What about the sixth grade elementary level? Uh, most high schools do not have a golf program for that age um, in this area at all. It starts in ninth grade. Our school golf. We do our, and that's where we do our junior programs. We do junior PGA league, and that's all accommodated for the kids that gets them ready for the high schools to take over the junior schools belt. Would it be a benefit to promote at that age? Because most your best golfers started even younger than that. You know, we, they're playing. Now they didn't start in ninth grade. They started at the, the, the uh, We do, man. We have our junior camps. We go to Bentonville Boys and Girls Club up here. We promote and we grow golf. We go to Cooper's. We actually had a Cooper golf day on Wednesday <coughs> scheduled. It got rained out. Um, but that's what we do. We promote them, encourage them. We put a putting green up at the um, Boys and Girls Club just up the road, donated from our APT tour that we have out here. So we encourage you junior golf and our pros are working at it and trying to grow them up to play golf. Yeah. Anything else? Anything from the back? Bruce? Mary? Well, I was going to say, but I think Daryl has covered it. There's nothing on the list about education for kids or even adults. Intro to golf and dining. Yeah. Did you say that, sorry? An intro to golf and dining for people who don't play golf and they come out and see what it's all about and then they dine afterwards and then see if they want to come back another day for. Playing dining. Golf and movie. You get there, I mean, you get there in some place. Yeah. I know you have the starter programs, etc. But this is a way to come out one night to see what it's all about. And when they try to hit it 24 times, and it's a struggle. Maybe they're gonna find out why you need dining much better. For the For the I encourage you, but you're going to find out. You take my life. One class of 10 minutes isn't going to do it. You good, Dora? Mary, anything else? No. Gino? Nothing. Okay. Steve? No. Thank you. You're welcome. Phil? Good Miss Susan? Mr. Tom? Good. All right. We will uh, reconvene on our rescheduled, regularly scheduled meeting next uh, Wednesday, and I will get the uh, draft of a recommendation out to everyone on the committee. And Susan's going to compile these on tomorrow. You'll have it by tomorrow. How about that? Any adjourned. Thanks.